I started beekeeping uh, in the early to mid 90s. So what, that's been uh, almost 30 years ago, almost three decades. Oh no, not at all. And remember though, I was really new into it, so I didn't really have inroads to understand anything about the beekeeping community, the industry, science and all. But I recently did see a graph on the scientific studies that were being published in 1995. And it was really low. And all the ones, you watch the graph grow to, this graph went all the way to 2014, and it just exploded. I think the big thing was really colony collapse disorder that uh, we wrestled with around 2006, because that brought a huge uh, interest to beekeeping. But when I started, no, it, it was very, I was in the dark. There was no internet. There was really limited bee clubs that I could be a part of compared to what it is today. I was in the dark ages. You know, I was raised as a, uh, a child of the 60s and 70s. And so most of the things that we did, I was just brought up to learn things on my own. I was kind of self-taught, right, about everything. Uh, that's what kids did back then. And so when it came to beekeeping, I just taught myself. I think I went to the library and uh, checked out a whole bunch of books. In case you don't know what a library is, <laughs> It's actually a place that, that, that holds a lot of books and you can go and check them out and bring them back when you're done. But uh, you, that's how we learned a lot through just reading books. So I, I was a self-starter in beekeeping. Oh gosh, everything about beekeeping has changed. Uh, we had the introduction of the Varroa destructor mite. So that changed uh, how, we dealt, how we deal with pests. Um, Mainly, probably the biggest change I've seen is the education is much more uh, up to par now. Before, it was tough to really learn about bees before you started, at least where I was, where I lived, and who I was at the time. But um, now there's so much on the internet, YouTube, Facebook groups, bee clubs, there's so many classes, and there's much more scientific studies that have been done since when I started. So much more information today. We have a lot more information to help us make wiser decisions. In fact, we have so much information today that it is almost difficult to know what to do because, you know, when I started, they used to say, if you have a beekeeping question, if you ask 11 beekeepers, you get 12 answers. It's worse today because if somebody asks you, what hive should I start with? Back then you would say a Langstroth hive, right? And today, there's 12 or 13 different style hives that somebody could tell you to start with. So the landscape has really changed in beekeeping dramatically in the last 10 years. Sometimes I don't know when people ask me, would you do anything differently if you had it to do over again? I probably wouldn't. I think the route that I chose was a good one for me. It worked out well. Uh, obviously, if I really had the knowledge that I have now back then, um, I think I would have really spent more time educating myself first about bees before I started. I got bees out of a tree. We cut them out of a tree. I knew nothing about honeybees. Zero. I started beekeeping with no knowledge at all. No knowledge about the honeybee management, anything. And so to do over again, I would definitely pour myself into being well educated before I jumped into it. I think the other thing that I would do differently is I, I jumped into beekeeping so passionately and I think I really grew too fast. I got really excited about bees. I, I just went from one hive to 10 to 100 in no time at all. I, I think that much, uh, that much that fast was overwhelming for me. I think I would ease into it more carefully and grow into it at a pace that wasn't overwhelming. Oh gosh, well obviously I'm gonna say my classes, <laughs> but I know that's not fair. There are people like me and people that are smarter than me giving classes and, and such. So I think the key is to find somebody that you're comfortable with, that has a teaching style that you can embrace. Because I do remember when I started to learn about bees, I would go to conferences. And I remember taking some classes actually. Um, and um, 
I don't know how to say this nicely, but it was very difficult learning from a few instructors. And that's the thing. Some people are really good at something, but they may not be good at explaining it. So find somebody that's really good at teaching you and um, try to wrap yourself around somebody that has experience. And I would say more than five to 10 years experience. If somebody has less than five years experience in beekeeping, may not be the best person to learn from. I mean, you can, don't get me wrong, but you can learn uh, from somebody with much more experience. That's true with anything that you're learning, right? And I think the, the other part about selecting someone to, or a way to learn is just take everything with a, with a real keen eye because just because somebody is saying it passionately and they have two or three people that also believe in what they're saying, um, you don't know if that's really how you should be doing it. So you got to look at research, you got to do your own homework and find out that this is a good uh, way to learn about bees through this person or these classes. These are proven ways. So you got to do, you got to put in some due diligence in figuring that out. Well, the, uh, I, was, I was teaching classes um, and so I thought I need to learn more about bees, but I wasn't being motivated, I couldn't motivate myself to really learn things that were really challenging, you know, because I was just busy being a beekeeper and working, raising a family and such. So I thought, okay, if I make a commitment to study hard to become a certified master beekeeper, that will force me to really dig into bees and learn everything I can, right? And so I chose the Eastern Apicultural Society because they just uh, have a way of testing you for beekeepers. They don't take you through a program. They just say, oh, you think you know everything about bees? Okay, uh, we're gonna test you in the field to see how you handle bees. We're gonna test you in the lab to find you know, pathogens under a microscope, identify treatments and all that, and other stuff in the lab. And we're gonna put you in an oral panel where other master beekeepers throw questions ask, at you and, you and you answer. And then you're gonna take an extensive written test. If you get 85% on those four tests, you're a certified master beekeeper. So I was facing those four uh, modules of tests. And so I spent a couple of years really learning about bees uh, so extensively. And that was a big push for me, it really was. That was really the uh, point where I got really excited about bees and knowing everything there is about bees. And I'll tell you, the more you learn about bees, the more you learn you, you, don't, you, you don't know what you thought you knew, right? You're just like, I got so much more to learn. And so that was a big push. That's something I think I would really suggest to anybody that has been keeping bees, you know, five or 10 years and you're, and you're loving bees, you wanna know more about bees, being certified will push you, push your ability to know more about not just bees, but swarm control, swarm management, making queens. It just, it has a way of accelerating your growth and understanding beekeeping in general. <laughs> um, I think that was something that in the beginning of YouTube, there, you know, YouTube isn't, wasn't what it is today. So in the beginning, YouTube did have a rocky road when it came to being accurate, I think, when beekeeping. Um, I, for one, uh, when I started making YouTube uh, beekeeping videos in 2008, um, of course, I was just kind of making a daily video blog of what I was doing. So it wasn't, I didn't have the knowledge that I have now. So anytime you watch somebody making a video, you've got to be careful not to say, not to think, okay, they know everything about it because they made it, they're on TV, so they're sharp, I'm going to do it their way. I get that. I get why some people are reluctant to recommend uh, YouTube as a way of learning about bees. It's not the tr traditional method. It's not. But times have changed, right? Now we do go to the internet. We do go to YouTube videos to find simple answers as how do I fix my dryer? Uh, that's not working anymore. I fixed my dryer by looking at a, <laughs> a video on YouTube. So there's a lot to learn on, on beekeeping on YouTube. But again, you're going to have to really study the person you're watching. What climate do they live in? What's their, what their years of experience are? Are they teaching? A lot of beekeeping channels are not teaching channels. They're just observation channels. Hey, come watch me as I do this. 
or come, come look at this, right? You might not learn a lot by them just seeing what they're, how, much, how many bees they have or what their bees are doing. So you gotta find a channel that really is instructional. But I think uh, people are starting to make a change in understanding that YouTube does have a very valuable place in the beekeeping community. I get, I get emails all the time of bee clubs asking me to speak. And so there are clubs recommending that people watch YouTube. So it's getting a lot better now. Oh, I'm real particular now. This is going to be specific. One of the things that I don't, I don't appreciate that change is when you push two frames together, these sidebars, when they touch, in the old days when I started, one sidebar came to a point and it rested against this sidebar of a frame. And what that meant is they didn't get propolized together. Now, most of the frames that I buy from major companies that produce them, both sidebars are flat. And so they go together and they're propolized and it's hard to get frames apart. It was real easy in the old days when they had a point going to a flat frame to put your hive tool in there and separate them. I'm disappointed that that changed. <laughs> I missed that. Um, I was kind of disappointed over other changes in the beginning. Like I didn't like going to a screen bottom board, but now I love it. I didn't like the J-hook hive tool. Now I love it. Um, so I can always find things to pick on that I wished hadn't really changed about beekeeping, uh, that I wished would have stayed the same. I was using wax foundation, now I use plastic, didn't like it at first, wouldn't go back to wax. So I think change comes with a little bit of resistance. So I've had enough years, I guess, um, struggling with the changes that now after I use them, I like them. So I could, I could nitpick a few things, but all in all, I think most of the changes I've seen in beekeeping, um, there's not much I'd ever want to go back to the way of doing it back then. It's, it's not terribly different. It's just a few and unique kind of um, tools maybe that, that are different, but I kind of like the way they are now. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's, that's a challenging question. Um, so, you know, 30 years ago, uh, I would have told my younger self that pour your life into bees because it's going to be something that you're going to love. It's going to be something that really gives you meaning in life. Bees are going to give you meaning. Bees are going to help be your career and your future. Uh, learn all you can about them. Spend time doing studies about bees. And learn to enjoy them. Don't rush. Don't rush things, but just take your time and, and realize that beekeeping is a process, that it's a journey along the way that you're going to enjoy more than arriving at a certain point. Because I always, when I was back, when I was younger, I wanted, you know, we, we have this ego problem. And so I was thinking, man, if I could have 100 hives, I'd be somebody, right? That's silly to think that. And so I got to 100 hives. And when I got there, I realized I was still the same person. So I, I think that I would tell my younger self, you know, put your ego aside, enjoy bees, whether you have 100 colonies or 10 or 20, um, and learn all you can because if you can help other people, um, if you can really inspire other people to keep bees and teach other people beekeeping, that's going to be very fulfilling for you. So. Try to pour your life into learning about bees, both being well-educated, but also well-experienced and doing everything there is about bees. And you're gonna, you're gonna love bees. That's what I'd tell my younger self.